Good Monday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Thankful to the good Lord above to be able to come together with you to share from God's word. Hope to be a little source of edification, uh, a blessing to you all on social media. Thank you all for co-laboring in uh, this ministry as we try to share out the word to the world. And today uh, we go through 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And as I was going through this chapter of the Bible this morning, the beginning part, the first 10 verses, we see the Apostle Paul being given a thorn in his flesh. And we just read uh, in the chapter before, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 22 to 33, how Paul suffered much for the sake of Christ. That could be the thorn. Could be also bad eyesight. We read in Galatians chapter 4, verse 15, and in Galatians chapter 6, verse 11, where it seems like Paul had bad eyes. Uh, but uh, whatever it is that the thorn was, it was painful. And um, it came after he was brought up to the third heaven, something that only Christ himself saw, because Christ is from heaven, and now he's back up in heaven interceding for us, as we read in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, on our behalf. And the apostle John had some form of a vision of heaven, we read in Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. But it seems like oftentimes in life when we have that taste of heaven, when things are going good in our life, the bottom comes out from amongst us. You get that three o'clock in the morning phone call. You get that diagnosis you weren't expecting. A situation happens in your family with your health unexpectedly. This happened also in the life of uh, Elijah the prophet, 1 Kings chapter 18. I remember reading that passage of scripture way back, a while back and still reminds me of how sometimes after those mountaintop experiences come the valleys Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 on the Mount Carmel defeated 450 prophets of Baal a great victory by God's grace he must have been feeling really good then right after that 1 Kings chapter 19 we see him fleeing from a woman by the name of Jezebel hiding in a cave and pleading that God would take his life. He didn't want to live no more. And oftentimes this is how it is in our lives. It's been said, and I really agree with this. I heard this from a preacher many years ago. You're either going in a crisis, coming out of a crisis, or being prepared for a crisis in your life. Trials and tribulations will come to us. And oftentimes they come after we've gone to a season of refreshing and maybe good health and things have been quiet. Then the storms come. Pain and suffering comes because of sin. Uh, bottom line is, is the ultimate reason why we do suffer is because of the fall. Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter three. And the next chapter, Genesis chapter four, we see Cain killing his brother Abel. Uh, we read of David and a man after God's own heart. We read in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But what did he do? Uh, when things were going good in his life, he was sitting in the pinnacle of the temple. And uh, instead of being at war with his soldiers, was comfortable, relaxing, enjoying life. And we read in 2 Samuel chapter 11, you know, he saw that woman where he should have been busy in his life. And instead of being with his soldiers, he started eyeing a woman and you read the next few chapters of 2 Samuel and you see nothing but misery and destruction. But there are times we might suffer because of Satan trying to attack us. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18 speaks about how our battles in life are spiritual. Ultimately, our battles are spiritually. People are dealing with anxiety and depression today, a lot of people. And oftentimes they're told it's a chemical imbalance or a um, trauma for when they were young. I've been working with troubled children for over 31 years now, and that could be true, but ultimately the battle is spiritually. You see, Satan is our adversary. He's our enemy. It happened with Job in Job chapter 1, where God permitted Job to basically, in verse 12 of Job chapter 1, basically do whatever he wanted with Job, but he wouldn't be able to take Job's life. Satan went out and found Job, and you could read the book of Job. Obviously, we know a lot about his story and all the pain and suffering he went through. 
But at the end of Job, Job chapter 42, we see that he came out of all that more prosperous than he was before. That's because despite everything we go through in life, God is working everything out according to the counsel of his will. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11, he's working everything out for our good. As we read in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, to ultimately conform us to Jesus Christ. This is what the Apostle Paul learned here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. He was given this thorn in the flesh and he asked Christ three times to remove it. Christ said, no, for my grace is sufficient for you. For when you are weak, then I am strong. You see, when you're going through the trials of life, that's when you experience the closeness of God more in your life than if things were just going good. Psalm 34 verses 18 and 19 reminds us that God is close to the brokenhearted, those that are crushed in spirit. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver them from them all. There is something about when you're in the valley where you experience the closeness of God like you would never have before. And then when it comes to suffering, let us not just remember our own pain and suffering, but the pain and suffering of others. We all know the story of the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. We're told in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, to carry the burden so as to fulfill the law of Christ. You see, we need to be reminded, as Proverbs 11, verse 25 says, when we refresh others, we too are refreshed ourselves. You see, the temptation is when you're going through trials in your life is to cover up, put yourself in a little bubble, hide from the world. I know I've been guilty of that at times in my life, even as a professing Christian, not wanting to be bothered with others, just dwelling on what was going on in my own life. But if we truly want to fulfill the law of Christ, and we truly want to be followers of the Lord, we need to obey what the word says and think of others. Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 tells us that if we are to have the mind of Christ, we are to think of others more than ourselves. We read a little earlier in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 and 4 that God comforts us in our trials so that we can comfort others. When you go through situations in life and you experience the comforting grace of God, the mercy of God, what are we to do? Are we to sit down and just absorb it and take it in? Yes, but we're also to be out there, out and about helping others. I'm finding in my own life, God is putting on my heart to be with the elderly more now. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse one tells us, remember the Lord your God in the days of your youth before the days of trouble come. As I'm getting older now, I have a slip disc, pinched nerve in my lower back. Didn't have that when I was younger. Deviated septum, my sinuses, didn't have that when I was younger. Um, as you get older, and I guess you can all attest this, we have things going on in our lives that we didn't have going on when we were younger. And people older than me, my complex, finding the time to visit them. Um, listen to their stories. Oftentimes the elderly are forgotten people in our society. I've spent many years with children and praise God for that, but now I'm finding the need to help the elderly. Whatever God puts on your heart, my friends, when you're going through situations and trials in life, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell them what God has done for you. Tell them the monuments of God's grace in your own past. And I hope today's devotional video will be a comfort to you, whatever you're going through. I'm on a prayer thread on uh, social media with the church where I go to, with the people in my church, and there's a lot of people suffering right now. There's so much heaviness in people's lives. We are not alone. And I hope today's devotional video will remind us of that. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. Oh Lord, we are called to a life that's gonna be suffering. Job chapter five, verse seven reminds us, as the sparks go upward, so is a person born for trouble. But Lord, in those troubles, may we find the one who is the problem solver, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name I pray. God bless you.